Jimmy Butler does what he does best. A lot of game winners throughout his career, and he sinks one in the final seconds of the game to steal one here against the Bulls. A game the Bulls really should have had just poor execution in the final minute with DeMar turning the ball over when they're already up to the Heat tying it on the other end, and rather than setting up a well thought out play, I was surprised Billy Donovan didn't call a timeout when the Bulls still had two timeouts left at that point, and instead, you get a driving play by Vucevic, and he just misses a contested hook shot. The Heat don't call timeout on their side, so as to not give the Bulls the chance to set their defense and come off an inbounds play instead, and Jimmy gets the switch to put him on Kobe White and hits the game winner calmly. Just brutal. Bulls should have won this game. And when every game is pretty critical for the Bulls to be able to dig themselves out of this hole that they found themselves in, a buzzer-beating loss, yet another close game in which they lose, that stings. That said, you guys know I try to keep things positive where I can because there were a lot of great things that we saw from this game. First of all, even though the Bulls came out a little flat, weren't hitting shots, weren't playing the kind of scrappy defense that we have been seeing from them, they turned that around and yes, the third quarter was bad, but what I like seeing from this team, again, ever since Zach Levine has been out of the lineup, is the pace, transition style offense, floor spacing and ball movement, you know, playing NBA basketball in 2023. Yeah, you're going to have half court ISO plays here and there, especially in the fourth quarter when the game slows down a bit when it's close and back and forth baskets, but the point is their style of play has changed. The philosophy and approach of playing more up-tempo and scrappy on the defensive end remains with this team, and that's what's valuable to me, because last season we would see games where the Bulls would play like this, and you would think, okay, they finally figured out how to play modern basketball. They do it for two or three games, and then the Bulls would revert back to their old ways. This is, for the most part anyway, eight straight games they've been playing like this. I mean, you see it, we can all see it. Even in the losses, they're playing much better basketball. You don't have to be an expert in the game to be able to see that. Other positives from this one, I mean, passing was still good. Like, yeah, 25 assists, which still decent, higher than the Bulls average, but it's not the 30 plus we've been seeing from them. But you would have seen more assists had guys not been missing some wide open shots. Like, that's the thing, the ball movement and the way that they're generating looks are good. Knocking it down is another question. Another positive though, Bulls continue to shoot it well from deep, 16 for 38 from three, 42% as a team, really, really hurt the Bulls, well, one, not having Ox Caruso in the game, but then Torrey Craig not returning in the second half after suffering an injury when he was on a heater, scoring 16 points in the first half, shooting four for five from three, and then as far as other positives, because as I've said before, we know this era of Bulls basketball or this core that the Bulls have today isn't going to be around for much longer. So I mentioned before, the things I'm looking out for in Bulls games going forward, whether it's a win or a loss, is how are their young players showing up. And tonight you had an incredible game from Patrick Williams. 25 points, was aggressive early, was aggressive throughout the game, was all over the court on both ends of the floor, was driving to the basket and getting to the foul line, had an epic poster on Hawkes that had me jumping up and down, was 8 for 10 from the floor, 4 for 5 from 3, 5 for 5 from the line, very efficient game from Pat, and he also had 7 rebounds and 4 assists. Pat has slowly but surely worked himself into keeping that starting spot back. He lost it in the early going, Torrey Craig, then got it back when DeMar was out for a game, but then the Bulls started going with Alex Caruso. Then he got hurt, but I think it's safe to say now we'll be seeing Patrick Williams in that starting spot for the foreseeable future. Every passing game, it just seems like he's getting more and more confident when he's out there. He's taking care of the ball better when driving to the basket, and you have to love seeing this if you're a Bulls fan, knowing this team could very well look different in just a few short months, and you need to start looking to the future. And then Kobe White, what's funny is that I've been talking about it for a while. Well, eventually, he's going to have a so-so game, right? He's been playing so well, like he's going to have a down game. And through three quarters, I was like, okay, this is it. This is the bad game. But I was encouraged because Patrick Williams was stepping up in an off game from Kobe White. But then Kobe White just went berserk in the fourth quarter. Dude didn't hit a single three through three quarters. And you thought, okay, the streak of three or more threes is going to end. And then he gets 10 points in like, what, a minute and 19, hitting two threes, and then would eventually hit two more after that. Kobe had 19 points, 19 of his 22 points in the fourth quarter, was seven for 15 overall, four for 10 from three. But for me, it was also his decision-making down the stretch, making the right plays, reading the game well and playing with confidence and also it said a lot to me just as a fan watching is that I feel so much more comfortable knowing Kobe White is controlling the ball at the end of the game that would have never been the case last year or really any time throughout Kobe's career 
where I would have been wincing if I saw Kobe with the ball in his hands in clutch moments. Like at this point, I'm almost more comfortable seeing Kobe White with the ball in his hands in the fourth quarter than DeMar. I joked about how he's the new king in the fourth or king of the fourth if you want to go the uh, Game of Thrones reference, but man, Kobe is making a name for himself in these clutch moments, hitting big shots or making the right plays on passes at the end of the game. A much more clutch player than someone like Zach Levine. Kobe also had seven rebounds and five assists. And then for DeMar DeRozan, I mean, very strong, efficient game, played 42 minutes with the Bulls and all their injuries, 27 points, nine for 13 from the floor, five assists, two steals, and three blocks. For DeMar, the biggest thing was that turnover at the end of the game, which led to the Heat tying it. Would have loved to see a better play set up there, but overall, a good game from DeMar. And then Vucevic, not the best game, which is pretty disappointing considering the Heat were without Bam Adebayo. And I know it wasn't really his job specifically to guard Kevin Love and the Bulls fumbled a lot of possessions where they didn't read switches or they just left him open on the perimeter. But it is inexcusable to let Kevin Love go 6 for 10 from 3, 8 for 12 overall with 22 points. But the defense aside, Vucevic wasn't able to get it going on offense. 12 points, 3 for 13 from the floor. And again, I don't know why he thought it was a good idea to try to take it to the rack in those final seconds when he was contested like that. Just not a good possession. And then the other thing I was going to say is that it was good seeing Dalen Terry getting some solid minutes in the rotation. And he actually did some nice things when he was out there on the court. But what didn't make sense to me was leaving him out there for as long as they did, especially towards the end of the third quarter and the start of the fourth, because the Heat just kept switching Hawkins on Dalen Terry. And that's a horrible matchup every time with Hawkins having the size advantage over him. Like I get that you need to give Patrick Williams a breather, but then maybe give Julian Phillips a few minutes who still doesn't have the size of Hawkins, but at least has better length to match up with Jaime one on one. That dude Hawkins is going to be good, man. Really good. Four year college player, NBA ready, and has found himself a nice role on this Miami Heat team. Anyway, overall, again, I liked a lot of the things that I saw in this game, despite the Bulls coming up short. Bad sequence in the final minute that they need to start honing in on and figuring out because the Bulls cannot keep losing these close games like we've seen so far this season. Hopefully, they use this buzzer-beating loss as a learning experience for how to better execute on those final possessions of the game on both ends of the floor. Like I said, schedule isn't getting any easier. Bulls are off to Philly to take on the red-hot Philadelphia 76ers on Monday. Hopefully, we'll get some good news on Alex Caruso and Torrey Craig with them being back in the lineup. But until then, guys, as always, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.